Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at how to stop Windows telemetry, advertising, and all that kind of stuff, which just basically gets in the way, sends your details to Microsoft, and potentially slows down your PC. So, let's take a look at how we can stop all that. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to stop some of Windows telemetry and also advertising and all that kind of stuff that happens in the background of Windows 10 and Windows 11 that sends information to Microsoft and basically is just scattered across the system. And it's very hard to keep track of it all and delete it and all that kind of stuff. And we've done various videos before on disabling certain features in either Edge, System Restore, etc., etc. There's actually a cool utility you can use, which is free of charge, which you can just go in and basically tick some boxes and that is it. Very simple, very straightforward to do. And in fact, it's so simple, we're gonna go ahead and do it right now. So you're gonna to wanna to go over to your favorite web browser and go to the website above. So that's pxc-coding.com. And the actual utility we wanna use is this one here called Do Not Spy 11. Now, if you're on older versions of Windows, then feel free to use the Do Not Spy 7 or Do Not Spy 8. Uh, those are obviously for Windows 7, Windows 8 and 8.1. But if you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11, you can use this one here. So let's click on Do Not Spy 11. And as you can see, many, many downloads. Lots of people use this. It's actually a very cool little utility. It supports Windows 10 up to Windows version 21H2 and also Windows 11 up to Windows 11 22H2, which is the current version. Now, obviously, depending when you're watching this, uh, your versions may differ and the download version may be different, but it's going to be the same kind of scenario anyway. So as you can see, it lets you manage things like advertising, apps, Defender, Edge, Office, Privacy, Search, Start, and Updates, and all that stuff. And it's actually a quite a clean interface. So let's go ahead and we'll download Do Not Spy 11. We're gonna download this. There is options. You can get a pro version, so you can share settings, load profiles, and all that kind of stuff if you want to. Uh, very inexpensive, so if you do want to do that, feel free to do so. We're not affiliated in any way, shape, or form, so if you want to help support this app development and give something back to the creator, then feel free to do that. Or alternatively, if you want the ad-free version to see how it goes and uh, see if it's actually any good. There's no ads in it anyway, but just uh, if you don't want the extra bits and pieces, then you can use this and see what it's like. And if you like it, maybe throw them a few dollars when you decide to. So click on download. We're going to save this to our Windows desktop. It's a very small executable file, so we can now minimize this window and go to the installation. So just double click on it as you would normally, and you will get this come up on your system saying that Windows has protected your PC. Uh, this is because this runs at quite a deep level on the system and it is a unknown publisher because they haven't paid Microsoft to be basically a qualified publisher. At this point, it's entirely up to you whether you follow the rest of it or not. Um, I'm going to anyway, as with all things, Probably a good idea, do a backup of your system, etc., beforehand, just so you can revert settings should you need to. But once you're happy, click on Run Anyway, then you'll be greeted with the Windows User Account Control dialog. So do you actually want this to install? We're gonna say yes. And then we can choose our setup language, of which there are a couple there. And I'm gonna choose English, because that is our native language, believe it or not. And you can go through, read the licensing, should you wish to. Basically, you have to accept the agreement, then click on Next. And there's more information there about the setup. Feel free to read that at your leisure. You get to choose where you want to install it to, what you want it to be called, and also you have the option here for desktop shortcuts or a quick launch. I'm gonna choose a desktop one because it's always quite handy to have. Click on next, and then we'll go for install. And it's a very small program, so it doesn't need a great deal of room. And it gives you the option here to launch Do Not Spy 11 straight away when you click on finish. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is the main user interface, very uh, very minimal, not a great deal going on here. So you, at the top, you've got the options for specific things. So you can search here for a specific setting if you want to. You can choose to show all of the options in this box, uh, enabled only, and you've got the option for disabled only. So we're gonna just do show all. Gives you some information there so about the welcome and what is going on. So basically anything which is in blue is essentially safe to use and to disable or enable at your at your will. Orange, you should read the description. Really, you should read all of them to be on the safe side. Red ones are not recommended. Now, obviously, these are going to be down to your individual tastes and preferences. You can, if you want to, just deselect or select all and do whatever you want to. There will possibly be some as well, which are marked in grey. 
Now, grey ones are settings that have changed since the last time that Do Not Spy 11 was used. So obviously, now in the game, you're gonna to wanna to go in here, go into the About section and do Check for Updates, just to make sure you've got the latest version of the software. At present, this doesn't have a automatic update feature, which I feel is probably the best way, so it doesn't run kind of a, as a TSR in the background. So, and you can also go to their website to check for versions, etc. So you've also got actions, uh, creating a system restore point. It does actually ask you if you want to do that when we get to a later stage, so don't worry too much about that. And also you've got the options for saving and loading profiles should you have the uh, enhanced version of it. And also obviously Alt F4, you can close it all down. So essentially what you can do is do select all, check all, there we go. So this is basically gonna choose absolutely everything. Now I would advise not to do this unless um, you kind of know what you're doing or it's a non-mission critical system, in which case I would go through and just have a scan through and make sure that the ones you want are actually disabled or enabled. So there's gonna be some things which you may want to keep enabled. So if you use things like Microsoft OneDrive, you may want to allow that to continue. Uh, these ones here in advertising, basically you can get rid of all those, that's absolutely fine and also in apps. There's some things which you may want to do. So if you're a streamer or you use your uh, camera or microphone for content creation or for just using with um, certain programs. So the orange ones there, we're gonna deselect those because they're actually gonna be useful. And go through there, check out any others which are basically either orange or in red. So we'll get rid of those. Again, you can enable them if you want to. And if you click on them, it tells you what they are on the side there. And this one here, this is probably quite an important one. So uh, disable smart screen filter for URL. So this is actually gonna be protecting you. So really you do want that. Ideally, you don't want Microsoft knowing what URLs you're going to, but this is a kind of a win-win situation. So you get protection, they get your data. It's uh, yeah, you get the general idea. So also you can get rid of the steps recorder and this one here, disable telemetry. We definitely want to get rid of that one. So basically just go through, choose whichever ones you want to. If you're unsure of any of these, then please feel free to reach out and I'll try and answer your questions as best as possible. Uh, with disabling widgets, so that is the one which normally is down here. I've already got rid of that anyway on this particular version. Uh, you've got spotlight on desktop, etc. So yeah, we'll get rid of that. And consumer experiences, we'll get rid of that. You've also got the ones in search, so you can leave all those if you want to. You get the general idea. Updates is probably one which I would go into in a little bit more detail. So you, this is gonna be quite handy for some people, especially Arali, if you're watching this, uh, disable automatic driver update. If you've got an HP notebook or laptop, that is gonna be very helpful for you. So you can choose to enable or disable that. And also updates. I do want Windows updates and store updates. So I'm gonna uncheck those because we want to allow those. And for Office, I do want to sign into Office because we do use a Microsoft 365 account. So I do want that and we'll, uh, the orange ones there will allow, but everything else we'll leave as it is. So that is essentially it. So when you're happy, click on apply, and it will ask you now, do you want to create a system restore point? So it makes sense to do so. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then very quickly it's set that. Obviously, if you don't want to do all this, you can just discard, and also you can go back and kind of go back to your default settings if you wanted to. It is entirely up to you. So I say that is applied, all settings have been applied. So what I'm gonna do now, I've actually run some testing beforehand with PC Mark 10 to get a baseline result. So now I'm gonna reboot the computer, go back in, run PC Mark 10 again, and see actually if there is an increase in speed. Now immediately we're gonna have things so there is gonna be less telemetry and less things being sent out, which we probably won't notice that much, but it'd be interesting to see if there is actually a speed increase in the overall system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll come back when I finished. Okay, so we're all done and the results are in. And to be honest with you, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, if I'm completely honest with you. Although the system does seem a little bit more responsive. And actually that is um, displayed actually in the graphs. So if you look at the PC Mark 10 graphs, we've got the before and after, and you can see the before one, there's lots of little spikes or drops in frequency of the CPU where it dips down, which we didn't see with the second run after we disabled the telemetry and all that kind of stuff. So. Whether or not there was throttling or whether or not there was other applications jumping in and taking resources, I couldn't tell you because I honestly don't know. But we did seem to get a slightly improved score overall, especially in the productivity. So I'll put the scores up on the screen for you now. The 
other two types of scoring, I think it was essentials and something else. I'm not entirely sure what it was, I can't remember. But those are kind of within margin of error and run about 100 points difference. But actually in productivity, we managed to score about an additional 1,000 points. So definitely a win there for Do Not Spy 11. So if you want to try it out for yourselves, please feel free to do so. I'll put some links for it in the video description. And let me know, what does it do to your system overall specs? Maybe run a other couple of tests, see if you get better scores in things like Cinebench or 3 d Mark, whatever it might be. And if you do, let us know your before and afters in the comments section below. So I think that's going to wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then hit subscribe and the chime notification, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.